every filmmaker dreams of shooting on Ari. But do these cameras really live up to the hype? And is it worth renting in one for your next production? Treat yourself. Filming on Arri cameras is something that every filmmaker dreams about. They're the go-to choice in the world of high-end cinematography, and the Alexa Mini in particular has become a real powerhouse in the film industry. For our latest production, we decided to rent in an Arri Alexa Mini and see how it compared to our RED and Sony cinema camera ranges. So if you're considering shooting Arri for the first time, here's what we learned from our first experience shooting Arri. Shooting Arri for the first time, you'll most likely be renting and not purchasing, and many rental houses have a wide range of Arri cameras to choose from. The most prominent ones of these are the Alexa Mini, Alexa Mini LF, and the Amira, and it's really important to check the specifications and make sure that the camera you're choosing can deliver the resolution and specs that you need for your project. Arri differs to many other camera brands in the fact that although the camera might be capable of shooting 120 frames per second or RAW, you're going to need a license key as an operator to be able to unlock and use these features while you're shooting. Our major learning from the week was that we didn't check with the rental house whether or not the license key was included with the rental, which it wasn't. And license keys are fairly expensive. Here in the UK, they're around £3,000. So it's well worth making sure that your rental house includes a license key as they're not the kind of investment you can justify for a one-off project. Also make sure to check what lens mount system is available with your rental too. Our Alexa Mini was available on either PL or EF mount. And this was fantastic so meant we could choose EF and use our vintage Leica EF modded set and it also saves us having to rent in expensive PL rental lenses for the shoot too. Arri cameras are famed for that signature distinctive Arri look, and you can see it across many high-end commercials and productions, and it's something that we particularly wanted for this project. It's something we'll explore more in a future video, but if you're going for the Arri look, it's something that you definitely need to capture in camera and can't really be replicated in post. But as a very general summary, perhaps unsurprisingly, we we're incredibly impressed by the image that Alexa produced. Even in the midday sun, it was really impressive how well the Arri handled the bright highlights in the sky and also how much detail it kept in the shadows as well, even shooting ProRes and not RAW too, that was really impressive. Arri cameras are famed for how well they can handle these contrasty lighting situations and we agreed that it definitely handled them better than our RED Komodo or Sony FX6 would have in that shooting situation. I'm sure like most people, we assumed that a high-end, top-of-the-range cinema camera like an Arri Alexa would be incredibly difficult to operate, but in reality, they've got a very minimal design with far less buttons externally and far simpler menus internally than something like a Sony FX6. If you've never used an Arri before, you might need to watch a quick tutorial or skim through the user manual just to get to grips with exactly what each button does. But they're incredibly intuitive and it doesn't take long before you're feeling confident with it and back to focusing on your shots rather than figuring out how you use this camera. The Alexa Mini is well loved because of its practicality, bringing the quality images of the larger Arri cameras into a much smaller form factor. And although it is smaller, when it's fully rigged up, it is still fairly heavy to operate handheld. Something like a red Komodo, even with a V-lock on the back, you can operate that handheld for most of the day without too much trouble. But for the Alexa, it's that extra bit heavier. And if you are shooting, say, outdoors with lots of movement on a hot sunny day, it's really helpful to bring in some camera support to help take the weight off your operator's arms. And lastly, if you've never used a cinema camera system like the Arri's or the Reds before, it's just worth noting they take a little bit longer than other cameras to turn on, anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half. So just bear that in mind and build that into your shoot day planning. To summarise, shooting Arri is all about the craft. Choosing to shoot Arri in the first place is very much an expression of intention that you're looking to create something high end. Like many users, after our first shoot with Arri, we really fell in love with the camera system. And on your journey as a filmmaker, shooting a project on Arri should definitely be a goal not only to improve your craft, but also for the experience. You'll need the right project, the right environment, and most importantly, the right budget. But if those things are in place, there's no need to delay or hold off making that leap and using the Arri system. We definitely waited too long to do so. So treat yourself, rent an Arri, and you'll definitely be a better filmmaker because of it. <laughs>